Hello and welcome to Let's Play Jet Force Gemini. I'm Mushman and today I'm joined by some very special guests. Introduce yourselves. Hello. Say it! Hi, oh, I'm hi. Toddy. Deep Ryan. I'm Tony Hawks, the pro skater. <laughs> Uh, so what are you? What are you guys' experience with Jet Force Gemini? It's a widescreen game. Yeah, one of the few widescreen games from Nintendo 64. I didn't, I didn't resize this like a moron. Get all that YouTube no, cred. <laughs> Welcome to space. Welcome to space. Well, this actually isn't where the game starts. The story starts. The story start actually starts in the manual. Apparently there's this guy called Miser who's been taking over some planets and stuff. And Galactic Federation was like, yeah, let him let him do that. But until he wiped out completely the only form of galactic defense, which was the Jet Force Gemini. Except for this ship. We've got our freak protagonist, Juno, sipping on some coffee, Vela, whose hair is blue, I, I guess. She's pretending to work. And Looper. <laughs> Lupus, <laughs> who's just fucking awesome. He's chill as hell. The suicidal dog. <laughs> gun, gun right to the back of his head. <laughs> I don't know, shit's, shit's going down. Oh no, the, the grid! The grid! The excellent! This away. could be any arbitrary thing. You better throw my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Destroy a mug. It's of real importance. Damn, them some big fuzzy dice. <laughs> I was I was also noticing that his his view out into space is very low and very small. You can't actually see directly in front of him. Fuck you man, he's low rider. Also genocide. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so the ants have been well, they're supposed to be enslaving the tribals, but I I, I it doesn't really look like that. Yeah, put their corpses to work. <laughs> They're going into manure. I mean, um, fertilizer. Yeah, same thing. They both smell like poop. <laughs> Turns out that Mizar's troops have piled up with us, and now we're going to try and escape. But oh no! Ah! <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, turns out that wasn't a Delicious problem. Delicious Gibbs. <laughs> I don't know. It sort of looks more like phlegm than blood. And the body's twitching. <laughs> Kill me! <laughs> Skip's finish the job! Skip's graphic, man. Is this what was Dark rated like PG? It was rated M15 plus. No. You know we're getting serious, Nintendo. <laughs> it's like what? This Golden Eye and Perfect Dark? M, by the way, is the Australian equivalent to T over in America. Also, notice this this is something interesting. Juno is holding the machine gun. This is going to become very apparent in a few moments, but just keep that in mind. Uh, we're about. I don't get the treadmills. <laughs> <laughs> They're fat. Okay. <laughs> the the this is not possible steam anymore. <laughs> Juno doesn't even have a fucking skull. I, I like to think of these helmets the skull. He has a brain the size of a fucking suitcase. <laughs> His parents were related before they were married. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we're gonna check out this whole invasion thing that's going on. Perhaps, uh, perhaps we can do something about it. I mean, forgot about that. <laughs> All the shenanigans. Too busy getting ramped off coffee to give a fuck. <laughs> Juno also has no respect for public property. Setting bridges on fire. Set fire to a bridge. <laughs> burn, burn! I'm fucking buzzed! <laughs> Alright, welcome to the actual game. Jet Force Gemini is a third person shooter. We'll be getting into the actual third person shooting in a moment, but it looks like someone's here to meet us. Oh, it's Yoda. <laughs> It's Koala Yoda. <laughs> this is Magnus, he's the Goldwood Ambassador. Apparently this involves, like, you know, hang taking care of tribals or something. Which sounds like a pretty shitty job. He pretty much says that, hey, your friends, they ran off without you. And, uh, you should probably talk to the king. So, king tribal So man. when do we kill him? Now. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> that wasn't scripted, by the way. <laughs> 
Because nothing says peaceful like a bullet in the back of the head. <laughs> you call it peaceful, I call it order. Well, yeah. banana, yeah, banana potato? Sure, we'll go with that. Inconsequential violence is, is amazing. <laughs> right now we're going to get uh, um, a few secrets in the game. This little area is pretty easy to miss on your first way through unless you're like me and do a lot of exploring OCD like. These coins, they have a purpose but not in the immediate future. There's a totem at the bottom of that lake that is also not going to come into play for a while so just, just keep that in mind. In the meantime we're going to get our first weapon of the game. Well, kind of. Have to make violence to get violence. You shoot those fucking chest serpent. Wait, that's not a fucking weapon. That's not a gun. What? <laughs> <laughs> this is a. It's a weapon if you hate fish. Well, no. It it this the the fish food contains arsenic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the fish food it all it does is it makes fish follow the little particle. I've been trying to get the fish will kind of follow it. I think I finally get one to do that. But it doesn't work like the bug bait or anything in Half-Life 2. Star Wars. It's just the fish food. <laughs> you have learnt well. It's like we're actually watching Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a design motif throughout. Oh no, this old guy's gonna do a thing. I don't know, he's, he's wearing the dead ants as he's... As his hat. Skull of his enemies. <laughs> This is Jeff, Ed. king of all the tribals. He doesn't really have much to say. He says, hey, if you see this, have some of the tribals out there, could you save them? My brother's missing, but probably most importantly, he's going to show us a time loop of the events that happened. The actual invasion. Let me show you Mumbo magic. <laughs> this is the part where we get turned into a bee. <laughs> you got pork gum. Get to see the arse end of a ship, the old fashioned way. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with tapes? Can you not just use a video tape? <laughs> no, we have to have magical fucking flashbacks. I don't think recordable media was invented in this universe. <laughs> I haven't <laughs> seen it yet. Was. Magic and space travel and laser guns were. Sure. Tapes were not. Uh, Coming soon on Blu ray. <laughs> <laughs> I should probably point out that Jet Force Gemini was kind of took a lot of inspiration from a lot of other science fiction works. So I guess you could, you know, from Star Wars, Star Trek, Aliens. I, I haven't seen Starship them. Troopers. Yeah. So you you might be able to pick out a few of those, a few little motifs here and there. Neil Patrick Harris makes a cameo at some point. Yeah. Breaks everyone's brain. I like how the, the, that you know the one tribal's dancing here. And nobody's. They're just kind of like, uh, Bo, you suck. <laughs> He's the village drunk. Leave him alone. That's the end of that. It's a little bit out there. It just kind of looks bewildered. It's like, oh shit, I'm not getting a, a parking ticket for that, am I? <laughs> I'm sorry. I just wasn't watching the road. God. It's gonna be like one of those TAC ads. Sorry, officer, I have no idea how fast I was going. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the the last remaining thing. Koala. Were they again? Tribals? Tribals. They're kind of like koalas, I don't know. Ah, uh, enough of that, bollocks. We're gonna get our first collectible of the game. Oh boy. Ooh. This is a Gemini yeah. capacity increase. Gemini in, our, in this game is our health. You see that little symbol in the bottom left there? Pretty much, you've got all those bars, and each bar represents a single unit of health. However, if you lose all the bars, one of the lights in the little symbol will go out. Pretty much the idea is that all the lights go out, all the bars go out, you're dead. Please try so again. So do we have five or six health bars? Five health bars. Okay. This is a door, we can't open it, we need a yellow key, so um, I, I guess if you've played Doom, you know how to solve this puzzle. The, the, key, look, the key looked the red, it had a red gem on it. Oh, well, it was yeah, the um, actual kind of outside colour. Hey, Mangus, we're over here. Uh -huh. There we go. <laughs> you shot him in the back of the head, he's disoriented. No, it's early onset Alzheimer's, there was no violence involved. 
I don't know what you're talking about. We've done pretty much all we need to do in this area, so we're going to get a little c cool little briefing about the basic game mechanics after we, you know, do some basic target practice. All Mangus is saying right now is, shoot the guys behind you. Or kind oh, me. No, oh, okay, they're back. <laughs> I, I thought they just gave up, they were waiting too long for the old fart to finish talking. And he walked in front of my gun. That wasn't me that time. <laughs> He wants you to kill him, he just wants you to finish the job. The gold was in the forest world. Liberate this once peaceful planet from Mizar and his evil drones. Colored gems can be collected. These will increase your health. Drones. They remain on Goldwood in great numbers. Though weak, they often travel in groups. Don't be caught off guard by sniper drones. They use the treetops as ambush points. Pick them off using manual targeting. These crates contain ammunition. Collect them to increase your supplies. Alright, now it's time to get started with the actual game. Yes! Uh, actual, actual game. Yes! It involves murder. Oh, well, I'm cool with murder. A <laughs> uh, little clever thing about this game is that if you headshot an enemy, their head will drop off and you can collect the heads. Heads do something pretty cool, but we won't be seeing that for a while. They also drop a gun and sometimes get dismembered. It's pretty great. Oh my god. <laughs> and one of them's even given up. <laughs> <laughs> Did he throw down his gun? Yeah, he's, he's, he's given up. Random enemies will just randomly... You know, just surrender. <laughs> well, I, 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 guess, I guess it's... I guess it's the most humor thing to do is just let him go. You better not fucking let him go. I'll be disappointed if you let him go. I might just let him go. I don't know. He might just have a family or something. <laughs> well... <laughs> fucking knew it! I'm gonna be trying to save as many of the tribals as possible because video game logic says that it makes far more sense to try and complete something than it is to half-ass it or just not do it at all. I should also explain the little uh, doors there. They will only unlock if you've killed all the enemies in an area, so... <laughs> Even if they're surrendered. Even the ones that have surrendered? <laughs> yeah. Especially the ones that have surrendered. <laughs> there is no honor in surrender, only in death. You pose no threat to me, but I need your head to open this door. I just <laughs> shot the grenade out of that guy Ant's hand. That was pretty clutch, yeah. This game has pretty generous auto aim because you can pretty much run around everywhere and shoot stuff without aiming at all. What they wanted to do is they wanted this to be like fast and precise, as precise as a first person shooter. And it works generally pretty well, but if you've played any uh, uh, console shooter since the Xbox with dual analog control, you realize that, you know, dual analog's a whole lot better than this, and we'll be seeing why very shortly. In the meantime, we're just kind of clearing up the rest of the tribals who are kind of conveniently located here. And getting a little secret that is not immediately obvious. It's this box. Is that yellow key? It was in the box. But now we're finished here, it's pretty much, you know, run on to the end of the level. Here what I'm doing is manual targeting mode. You can move in manual targeting mode, which is pretty cool. I was trying to do this because I thought there was enemies around, but there wasn't. But it, it works pretty well. But there's a bit of a problem with it. What happens is that there's a certain threshold where the, the screen won't move. And you'll see here as I 
desperately try to shoot these proximity mines. God. There's a threshold where the screen won't move, and once you pass that threshold, the screen will move. It makes precision shooting kind of, really kind of difficult because you're expecting it to kind of move over a little bit, but it doesn't quite work. It's better than- Why would they do that though? I mean, like, the Nintendo 64's joystick was pretty terrible. Uh, it was... I don't know, I just guess it was pretty much the best they thought they could do with the technology, with the hardware technology available. Like, they do similar stuff with GoldenEye and Perfect Dark, but I don't know. Yeah, but frankly, it won't hinder us too much, because I'm, I'm playing with an actual controller. Playing this with the keyboard's kind of kind of bad. We're back to the start of the area, so we're going to go down the waterfall here. This is not really a secret. Both of these exits go to the next area, the area we would have been gone into if we went into that other door, so uh, there, there you go. We get another little health Gemini for our troubles. I, I guess you could miss that if you took the direct exit, but we're pretty much done here, so... Are they permanent or what? Yep. Uh, huh. Additions to your health are permanent. There's six health pickups in the whole, in the whole, for each character in the whole game. Join us next time where we might kill a tribal. See you then.